In this video, we are going to go over the first five of my top 10 best condo buildings in downtown Toronto. I'm going to focus on buildings located in the downtown core. So that would be anything south of Bloor, east of Dufferin and west of the DVP. So let's get right into it. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Fatty Nakla. I'm a real estate broker here in Toronto. And if you get any value at all, from this type of content and you haven't already please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're thinking about making a move here in the city whether it's for personal use or investment and want to book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me to have a chat about how i can help you with the process i have all my contact information in the description below and i'd be more than happy to help all right, so before we get into the top 10, I want to say that this is just my opinion. There are currently over 2,700 registered condo corporations in the city, so there's a ton to pick from. If you think there's a condo that I don't mention that you think should definitely be on this list, leave it in the comment section below and mention why. That way, whoever's watching this video can get the most out of it. And vice versa, if there's one I mentioned that you think should definitely not be on there, also let me know below. I'm in and out of condos showing clients units every single week and that's how I've determined which are my top 10 but I haven't actually lived in all these buildings myself so I'm making this list based on what I've seen so far and recommendations from other people who have lived there. When ranking these condos we'll be looking at a few criteria. For each building we're going to be looking at the developer, the price per square foot, the maintenance fee, the location, and then lastly, the investment potential. So how fast units are selling and what the average rent is. Again, we're just looking at units downtown Toronto. This list will be in no particular order and is again, 100% my opinion. All right, so number one on the list is 75 Portland. This building is located right in the heart of King West in the entertainment district at King Street West and Bathurst. The building is 11 stories high and has just about 200 loft style condos, all of which feature exposed concrete ceilings, exposed pillars, and they all just have a very uh, modern design. 75 Portland was developed by Free Developments back in 2010 and remains one of the most desirable buildings in King West. That being said, the price tag on a unit in this building tends to be a little bit higher than the average in King West. The price per square foot currently hovers around $1,100 per square foot, depending on the size of the suite. As you get bigger, it does tend to go down a little bit as well. Maintenance fees, which include both water and heat, are quite low at 75 Portland, considering it is a boutique building. The fees are currently around 70 cents per square foot investment wise units in this building sell on average in 17 days on the market so just over two weeks which is really really quick in our current market and the average rent per square foot is four dollars and 52 cents location wise again you're in the heart of king west you go east you're in the entertainment district you go west you're in liberty village so a pretty solid location if you're looking for a more lively and vibrant lifestyle Number two on the list is the Toy Factory Lofts located at 43 Hannah Avenue. This building is located in Liberty Village, which is just south of King Street West and east of Dufferin. Now, Toy Factory Lofts is a conversion that was done by Lantera back in 2008. It was originally the site of Irwin Toy Factory, which is Canada's oldest toy company, which has now been converted to a mixed use commercial and residential space. There's just over 200 units over eight stories. There's a few great things about this building that really, really make it stand out. Number one, the units themselves are very spacious. You can get one bedrooms at like eight or 900 square feet, which if you're familiar with the condo market here in Toronto, you'll know that is very rare. Number two, the units in this building have some of the lowest maintenance fees in the city at just under 65 cents per square foot. And up until about last year, they were actually at about 50 cents a square foot. In terms of average price, the lofts at 43 Hannah do tend to trade for a little bit higher than average of Liberty Village. 
at about 1150 per square foot. Location wise, it's pretty solid location. Everything is walking distance from a metro to an LCBO to a good life fitness. And then you have a bunch of restaurants as well. So the location is a plus as long as you're okay with living in Liberty Village because, you know, there's just one way in and one way out. So traffic is not always great, especially during rush hour or during big events. Investment wise, the lofts sell on average in 35 days on the market, which is still pretty good in our current market. And the average rent per square foot is $4.22, which does seem low, but you got to remember even the one bedroom or one plus 10 units in this building are generally bigger than usual. So you'll normally see these one bedrooms renting for $3,000 or more per month, which is pretty solid. For our third condo, I'm sticking with Liberty Village. 65, 75, 85 East Liberty is number three on my list. Now, I may be a little bit biased here because I did own a unit at 85 East Liberty, but this building is on the list mainly for the first time home buyer. The reason I like this complex is because it traditionally has a lower price per square foot, currently around $1,000 per square foot, and the maintenance fees are around 75 cents per square foot. The lower cost of entry and then the carrying costs are great for first time home home buyers. Also, most of the units do come with parking, which is a plus since you're not right in the city core. This complex was built in 2013 by Plaza Corp, and it's made up of three connected towers, which form one condo corporation. Each tower is about 25 stories, and the entire condo has 1,200 suites. Although there are this many units, it feels like a smaller building because there are three towers instead of just one big one. A few other positives about this building are the amenities, which there are tons of. They have the standard pool and gym, but then there's a rooftop party room, two bowling alleys, and a professional sports simulator room as well. And then lastly, some of these units do come with a huge terrace, some as big as the actual units, which you don't see often with Toronto condos. When you're driving down through Liberty Village, you can probably see them all along the complex. Fourth on our list is 10 York Street, not to be confused with 12 or 14 York Street, which is ICE Condos, which does seem to have a bad rep. This is 10 York. This building was built by Tridel, who is a very reputable builder in Toronto and is located near the intersection of Queens Key West and York Street, right by Harborfront and right by the Gardener. This building is a little bit bigger than the ones that I've gone through so far. It's 65 floors and has about 700 units total. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. That's way too many units for one building, and I agree it is a lot, but this building is very, very well managed. Traditionally, you have four elevators for your traditional 25 to 30 story buildings, while this one has eight elevators total, and they are split up so that only some go to low rise units and others go to the high rise. That way, it's not too congested. I've been to this building multiple times for showings, and I don't think I've ever waited longer than a minute or two for an elevator. Now, because of the height, many of the units on the higher floors do get full unobstructed views of the lake or the city, which is great. But because you are right next to the gardener, some of the lower floor units will be right next to the highway, which will really, really affect the value of the unit. So it's really hit or miss there in terms of your exposure. In terms of the building itself, there's tons of amenities. You have two party rooms a professional grade theater, a media and games room, yoga studio, spin studio, a huge fitness center, an outdoor pool, you name it, they have it. Also with 10 York, Tridel did incorporate a lot of smart tech features that I don't see often in other buildings. When you enter the building, they have your standard directory to buzz into the condo through a touchpad screen, but then they also do incorporate a camera so that you're able to see who you're letting into the building. So that's pretty, pretty unique. Then they have smartphone keyless entry, so you can actually program your phone to act as a fob to scan into the building and into the elevators. They have keypad front door entry, so every unit has its own keypad with your own unique code to get into the suite. And then they also have a unique package notification system where you'll receive notifications directly to your phone about packages that come in for you, which will be sent to a designated room where there is an automated signature or code system to pick up the packages. I've seen many buildings where you walk in, 
there's always a huge stack of packages right behind the front desk and some are most likely being lost because it's just really really unorganized so 10 york has definitely found a more modern solution to this problem price wise units in this building trade for around 1200 per square foot which is a little bit higher than the average in our current market and the maintenance fee currently is 68 cents per square foot which is pretty good although it is important to note that the maintenance fee here does not include water or heat those are metered separately the units in this building sell on average in 28 days which is again not too bad in our current market and investment wise this building is only four years old so the units here are not rent controlled meaning you can increase the rent year after year by however much you'd like you don't have to stick to the city guidelines and the average rent currently is four dollars and 36 cents per square foot last on our list for today is eight charlotte street or the charlie condos this condo building was built about 10 years ago by great golf who is a very reputable builder they have many successful projects all over the city it is located right at the corner of king street west and spadina so you're really right in the heart of the entertainment district a few blocks east you're in the financial district and union station a few blocks south and you're right by roger center the cn tower and harbor front so location wise it's pretty good the building itself is 36 stories high with just over 300 units there's also tons of amenities you have a fitness center gym game room and then you have an outdoor rooftop pool and terrace as well the pricing on units in this building tends to be a little bit higher than the average in king west although they have come down a little bit more recently and are currently at about 1100 per square foot the maintenance fee also did just increase this past year and sits at just over 80 cents per square foot but does include heat and water for investment purposes units in this building sell on average in about 27 days so just under a month and rent for four dollars and 44 cents per square foot one important thing to note about this building is it is one of the few in downtown Toronto that actually do allow short-term rentals or Airbnb. So if that's something that you may be interested in as an owner, it is allowed. And if you're someone who is against that completely, I would probably not buy into this building. Also, another thing to note for this one is there is a proposed condo that would be built at 400 King Street, which is directly next to the building facing east. So if you are looking at units here with an east view those will most likely be blocked in the next five to ten years i don't know by how much but just something to be aware of so there you have it my top five out of ten condos in downtown toronto remember these are in no specific order but make sure that you do hit that subscribe button below so that you get notified when part two does come out Thank you again for watching. Again, let me know in the comments section below if you think I missed any buildings. And as always, if you do want to reach out to talk to me about anything real estate, my contact information is all in the description below. I'll see you guys on the next one.